Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Scrapping for Less, and we are going to reveal and also hop along in a blog for their Flavor of the Month card kit for October 2019. October's theme is called Christmas Around the World. So as always, there's an ingredient sheet and a download that will be available, and links will be down below in my video description. Your cardstock is Night Shift Navy, Black Licorice, Wild Cherry, or Red Hot, Snow Cone, Timber Green, and Banana Split. Okay, now again, the red could be either Wild Cherry or Red Hot. For our first collection, it's called Holiday Flowers. So these are the papers, and they are by Scrapping for Less. The stamp set will also be by Scrapping for Less, and it's called a Mexican Holiday stamp. We're going to have some enamel dots, some ribbon, and some 3D punch outs by finding it trading. For collection number two, it's called Australian Christmas. I always stress or fight with these bags. It's me, nothing else. So the papers are nice and bright, and again, they are by Scrapping for Less and Double Sided. You will also get some colored flags by Trim Craft. You will also get a card to color by Kaiser Craft. Um, this very much intrigues me. Um, so it's got a beautiful design. Now it is small, so you would always have to keep your pencil sharp to make sure that you could color it. And then the stamp set is by Sunny, St Sunny Studio Stamps called Surfing Santa. These are the flags. So you would just fold them in half and put them on the um, wooden dowels. For collection three, this one is called Nordic Winter. And as always, each of your collections, you will get your envelope. So again, double-sided, and you have all of these beautiful prints. You're also going to get a piece of twine by Doris either sugar dust or white sequins by scrapping for less so either or not both some ephemera by pink paisley your stamp set is called a swedish christmas stamp by scrapping for less and tawny owl papery so nice little combination going on there for collection four, it's called A Warm and Cozy Christmas. These are your papers, again, by scrap, Scrapping for Less. Again, you're going to have some enamel dots, some colored heavy chipboard pieces by Ruby Rocket. You will also get some foil mates and a piece of foil. Now, no, to use the um, these tags here, you would need to have a laminator. If not, I will be showing you how you can use that foil without a laminator. The stamp set is called O Tannenbaum by Scrapping for Less. Now, everything here that I've just shown, cardstock and the four collections, is the Double Dip Sunday level. So if you subscribe to that, those are the items that you're going to receive. If you subscribe to the banana split level, you are going to get a wood slice ornament, a stickers glitter glue, and it could be any random color. Mine just happens to be a white. You'll also be getting a die and a sentiment set. Now that photo that I was just showing, that's what the die looks like. It's not the size. Just wanted to make sure you could see what it would look like. It's beautiful font. And then of course, Merry Christmas uh, sentiments or holiday sentiments. So let's get started in our first card. So I dug into the pattern paper. I cut a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half of the solid, solid card stock that comes in the kit. And I layered the white wooden panel on top. I'm then going to take the other wooden panel, which is darker, the dark brown, and I'm going to prop that up using some double-sided foam squares towards the bottom. So it's almost like a wall. I'll be using those uh, pull-outs, those die-cut elements for this card. 
I'm going to take the ribbon and wrap it around. And I was debating, did I want to go with this ribbon? Would it be the right red? Obviously, I went with it. I'm going to grab my tweezers because I do not have three hands to tie a bow wrapping it around a card. I am in awe of people who can do that. And then I will fuss with this bow for some time. Um, bows and me are just, they're just, we're just not friends. Don't know why. So yeah, I'm going to keep on fussing that until it looks like a bow. I'm going to pop these out. These do pop out very simply. Um, and then I'm going to place them along the one side. One of the things that I love to have on hand um, are note cards. Um, they don't have a sentiment on the, on the outside. They, they don't say happy birthday or celebration or happy holidays or anything like that. They're just plain cards without a sentiment. Um, I do like to keep those on hand only because no matter what occasion comes up for me, I can just grab one of them based on the time frame of when the celebration is. Um, I can make them themed. Um, I can just grab them and then I can just write my note on the inside, which will say what it is. Um, so that's what uh, something that I'm going to do because I'm running low on them. I do like to write notes um, to people just to say hi, um, say hello, thinking of you, and, and so forth. I'm going to add three of the enamel dots to the front. And that is our first card. For our second card, yes, I did want to work with this um, card you can color. Now, I didn't color it, obviously. I'm going to start out with some tattered rose, and I'm using my makeup brushes. And I'm literally just going to blend right over the image. You could ink smush this. Um, which is what I intended to do originally. The reason why I did not, it's, this card is a very nice thickness. Um, but what I didn't want to happen is I, I didn't want it to warp too bad. And that's pretty much what it would have done. It would have really warped. Can it be done on this card? Absolutely. Yes, you can definitely do that. But I wanted to choose very soft colors. So I went with Bundled Sage and Tattered Rose. So I'm just applying some of that color around the wreath and around the outside of the card. Between each color, I am cleaning off my makeup brush. And that's just by using a very damp um, baby wipe. And then once I don't see the color coming out, I just dry it on either on another microfiber cloth or on my hand to make sure the moisture is not staying in the brush. For the two darker colors, Forest Moss and Aged Mahogany, they are going to be my splatters. So you know I was going to add water at some point to this. So I'm just adding a little bit of water. I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to start splattering. Um, the colors across this card. I do like splatters. I think they add interest, um, texture, um, and even in some cases, dimensions. So, once I have the two colors down, I will use my heat tool just to help dry it. I eventually, I do stop because the paper, the card was really starting to warp on me. So, I didn't want that to happen, so I did let this dry naturally. After a little bit, um, after me drying this, letting it dry on its own, I do come in with a paper towel just to pick up those splatters let's call them, are still wet 
it'll actually pick those color up. So I do and I will have different shades of the ink that I did choose, which in this case were my Distress Oxides. Grabbing a few of the gems and just going to place those around on the wreath as well. I'm just making sure that it looks even, um, that it looks like the way that I'm looking for it to look. This would be absolutely beautiful um, if you did want to use your colored pencils um, and so forth to color this. Just know that they are some small areas to color. And that is our card. So for the next card, I've got my piece of cardstock and I just fell in love with this piece of cardstock because of the bunnies. The bunny images are absolutely gorgeous. Again, I used some of the light blue. I cut another panel to four and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half. The panel with the bunnies that I laid on top is cut four and one eighth by five and three eighths. I'm going to use the tag and the ephemera that came in the kit. And first, I'm going to place the tag up onto the light blue cardstock, which, remember, is snow cone. And then I'm going to trim around it so that I have the same border going around the tag. So I didn't want just the tag out there. I wanted to make sure that the tag was framed. So instead of using a vintage photo like I own stock in, um, you can just set it and mat it, and that will give you the same effect. It'll help it to stand out. I'm going to use my hole puncher just to punch my hole in the top. And now I'm going to play around with the placement. I really wanted to use these pieces of ephemera. I wanted the tag to come from them. Um, I just don't want the, hat, the, the tag laying out on its own, if that makes sense. I will use my double-sided foam squares to prop the tag up onto the design area there. I grab some of my twine, I cut a length, and now I'm going to double it, and I will tie a bow. Um, this is really the fastest way that I know to tie a bow. Just say. I'm going to make sure that the, the size of the bow is what I'm looking for, and then that's going to sit on the top of the tag. So I'm going to remove the release paper and set the tag in place and then add my other elements around that. And of course it's on an angle. Yes! I grabbed a glue dot um, only because I have this propped up. I'm pushing the bow to go down to the paper so that the glue has something to adhere to both sides. I'm going to interlock the two die cuts and then I will add some foam tape or double-sided foam squares to one area and then I'll add glue to the other. Now, for these two pieces, I am going to use the vintage photo. You knew it was going to make an appearance, right? I'm just saying. Um, I do want the vintage photo to go around this flower and also the leaves. I, I think it will really help to make that stand out just so that it can be seen. Not to make a presence, not become the focal. The tag is the focal. Um, but just to, you know, maybe get... Um, a different feel, basically. 
So I use the combination of my liquid and my foam squares to prop that up onto the card. And now I'm going to place this on my standard A2 size card base. Know that all the card bases that I use today are standard A2 size. And that is our third card. Our fourth card is really simple, but I think it's one of my favorites. I grabbed a piece of the black cardstock, cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to use my VersaFine, um, excuse me, VersaMark ink, and I'm using the tree stamp. I am stamping that right onto my black cardstock. And then I'm going to pull out my silver embossing powder. I'm going to make sure that's well coated and I will heat set that. And then I will actually do this prep of this process again. So I'm going to do it twice um, just to get that image to be raised a little bit. Um, and will help smooth out the embossing powder just a little bit more, um, which is the look that I'm going for. So this is the first layer. And the silver embossing powder that I'm using is by Recollections. I get it at my local craft store by Michael's. Um, and they always carry um, some embossing powders, lots of colors too. So I'm going to bring my embossing powder back in and then I will heat set that also. Once this is heat set, I'm going to make sure that this is cooled. Um, you've got two layers of embossing powder there. It could still be warm, and if I do anything on top of that, um, it might smear it and actually pull it away. So you want to make sure that your embossing powders cool down before you do anything else with the card. I'm going to come in with a dry cloth and just wipe off the excess powder um, for when I used that earlier. I grabbed a regular cold, uh, gold uh, dye ink, or excuse me, pigment ink um, pad for my stash and I'm using my makeup brush to just place the gold around the tree so the tree is going to have uh, like a halo. I'm going to clean off my brush and at the same time I'm going to clean off any of the ink or the pigment ink um, if there's any of that that got onto the silver and there was. Um, there was a lot that came off onto my cloth. So that gold pigment ink just gives a little bit of shimmer. I do have some warping, so I am going to put out uh, my, or pull out my two inch film tape. Um, it is double sided. I get this from Uline and I am a fan. Um, if anything is warped, if this is put on the back for it to adhere, it'll absolutely be flat. Um, and I actually, I get it from Uline. So. I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to set it down onto the standard A2 size card base. I do end up trimming um, some of the end of the um, card base down. It was sticking out. I'm not quite sure if I went down crooked um, or what I was doing, but that's okay just going to create that little bit of a trim and just take that white right off. And again, no one will ever know. I'm going to grab some of the gems again. This time they are gold and I'm going to put them throughout the tree. I think they'll be great there. So I'm just making sure I'm pressing down when I put the enamel dots on. And then our card or no card is complete. Very simple, but I really do like the look. So for the last item, I'm going to be using that wooden disc. 
So I grabbed my double-sided tape. Now, again, remember what I said. What comes in this kit are those um, ThermoWeb um, or the, the foil mates and foil um, by ThermoWeb. So to use the little tiny sleeve and also the two cards um, that have the black writing on it, again, you need all of that with a laminator. So I'm going to show you one way to use... Um, double-sided tape in this case a strong one because you're trying to stick to a piece of wood um, but you want to make sure that you're using a good double-sided tape so that when you place your foil down it's going to adhere well so you really want to have a strong a very strong double-sided tape you also want to make sure that the shiny side is up, meaning the color side of the foil that you're using for this technique is actually facing up. And then just by pressing down, the foil is going to remain behind on top of the double-sided tape. And then I still have that extra that I can use for another project. I'm going to pull out the stickles that came in my kit. Now again, your colors can vary, and I'm just going to put thin lines of the glitter glue along each side of the foiled line. So it's almost like a candy cane that I'm making across this desk. Now what's even better, or what's great, this could either be an ornament, or you could actually make it a tag, just right on the other side, to or from, and you have a very unique and interesting tag for a gift. So I do hope you enjoyed today's project using Scrapping for Lesses Flavor of the Month card kit for October 2019. And again, the theme is Christmas around the world. As always, here are the close-ups are the, of the cards that we made today. All of the links to their blog, to their shop, for the downloads, for the ingredient sheets, and anything else that I can find for scrapping for less will be linked down below if you have any questions or comments please feel free to get yep leave those down below as well and i will get back to you as soon as i can thank you so much for stopping by and spending this little bit of time with me today if you haven't already i'd love for you to subscribe if you already subscribed thank you and if you've just subscribed make sure you hit ring the bell to know when the next video is launched I hope everyone is having a great day, but always remember what's most important for me. Always be creative.